to the arena. Leading us off, accompanied by the president of the Student Athlete Advisory Council, Stephen Pentek, member of our swimming and diving team, is the president of the college, Dr. Nancy Klonuski. <laughs> Escorted by Katie O'Gorman, a member of our softball team, is Jim Spartano. Next, we have Hall of Famer Elena Isby Larangio being escorted by Brandon Hickey, a member of our men's lacrosse team. Escorted by Brianna Spector, a member of our basketball team is Louis Condon. Our next Hall of Famer is Trisha Jager Bergen being escorted by Sean Gillen, a member of our wrestling program. And our final Hall of Famer being escorted by Emma Romeo, also a member of our softball team, is Mr. Don Bassett. Welcome to our 2015 class. Hello everyone, and welcome to the 17th annual induction ceremony. Um, again, my name is Tracy Ranieri. I'm the athletic, athletic director, and I'm so proud to see you all in the audience and so proud of this year's class. As we get started, I just wanted to say there was a sixth member of this class, John Pauley, uh, from the class of 1982. He had a medical emergency in his family, and we are going to celebrate him in next year's class. So with that said, I wanted to just start by, by saying today, we're gonna enshrine our highest achievers into the Hall of Fame and celebrate the pride and traditions we hold so dear in college athletics. The Hall of Fame exemplifies the greatest athletic triumphs in our university's history and also allows us to celebrate the leadership of men and women of vision and postgraduate success. This is an incredible, incredible class, and I can't wait for you to meet them more intimately as the program goes on. But SUNY Oneonta was established in 1889, and it's recorded that in the first spring of that year, our students organized an athletic association for baseball. Athletics are a window to the university, and 21 varsity athletic programs grew from there, weaving a tapestry of history into our university's narrative for the past 126 years. Today, we recognize and honor another class of self-starters who embody the values, the value-driven skills so evident in the college athlete. An event like this cannot take place without the help of a very dedicated group of professional staff, family, and friends, particularly our Hall of Fame committee. There are many of our Hall of Fame committee members in the, in the audience. Could I ask you to please stand and give them a round of applause? They work really hard to help us with this. I'd also like to thank Jeff Hazard. Um, Jeff Hazard is the Hall of Fame committee chair and is so dutiful in preparing stats every single game that lead us 
to overwhelmingly um, inducting some of these fine athletes. So I want to thank Jeff, and I also want to thank right behind me, Dr. Nancy Kleninsky, our, fear, our fearless leader, who really embodies and is always trying to help us make the student athlete experience that much better. Before we get started, there are a lot of Hall of Famers that have been inducted that are in the audience, and I would like very much to take a moment and recognize them. Thanks for coming back. Thanks for all the great words that you say about Oneonta, where you are all over the world. And uh, I'm going to start by just saying the class that you are inducted in, and then if you would please stand and stay standing, I'd really appreciate that. So from the class of 2000, Coach Garth Stam. From the class of 2001, Don Extell, Mike Pacintelik, and Joseph Spanfeller. From the class of 2003, Don Flewelling and Don Jester. From the class of 2004, Michelle Small. From the class of 2006, Kramer Harrington and Ed Leone. From the class of 2010, Dick Burr. From the class of 2011, Jane Grasdorf, Christine Monfit, and Dave Ranieri. From the class of 2013, David Bailey and Rick Yandoli. From the class of 2014, Philip Pops Megley. Also, John Hoyt Wilhelm. Can we please have a warm, warm <laughs> applause for these Hall of Famers? And we have two Hall of Famers here that, are not, that were inducted with teams of distinction uh, from the class of 2003 women's soccer, Laura Morcone, and the class of 1972 men's soccer, Max Schummel. You guys, please stand. It's such a great day. So this event is being broadcast, webcast, all over the country, and so I would like to say a warm hello to all the alumni anywhere and everywhere, special, and especially the Hall of Fame, past Hall of Fame members and alumni who couldn't be with us here today. Uh, please like us on Facebook, please friend us on Twitter as well, and at this point, it's my great, great pleasure to introduce Dr. Klinuski to the stage. Thank you, Tracy. What a wonderful day. I want to thank all of the Hall of Famers who have traveled to be with us today. I want to congratulate the newest members. We are so proud of all of your accomplishments. We're proud of you not only for being great athletes and contributing to your sport, but also your accomplishments in the rest of your life, in your career, in your personal and family life, in your community activities. And what great role models you are for the current students who have joined us today. And by the way, thanks for getting up early on a Saturday, dressing up. Um, but you're great role models for the young people. And we believe here at SUNY Oneonta that our alumni are the people our current students aspire to be because of your great love for the college and your great wisdom and your great achievements. So we think that it's important for us to show our pride and for you to show your pride in SUNY Oneonta. And we know that so many of you are fiercely loyal to this institution because it gave you your start and we're hoping that our current students are going to look back on these years and remember all of the lessons they learned and the inspiration they achieved, uh, received from all of you. Now, I'd like to make a special mention of a colleague president who's in the audience today, president of Utica College, Todd Hutton. Todd, would you stand?
You know, it's hard to get a college president to do something that's not job related because we have so many tasks. But he came to our college today to honor his former athletic director, Jim Doc Spartano, who is going to be inducted today. So warm welcome to you. And thanks for joining us. So once again, congratulations to the new inductees. Thank you to the Hall of Famers and especially to the people on the Hall of Fame committee. Thank you. You're gonna love this program, this is so much fun. And Jeff Hazard, who is going to be our MC um, and as well as led this entire event, um, is going, I would like to just take a moment and just introduce him. Jeff has been here now um, for 16 years and he is our Assistant Athletic Director and Sports Information Director, and he's without a doubt one of the best sports information directors in the country. Last year, he was awarded the Irving T. Marsh Award, which goes to the very best sports information director in the country, and he's our own right here at Oneana, the best of the best, and so he belongs on stage, uh, really getting to know the rest of our Hall of Famers. So with that said, First of all, Jeff, thank you so much for all that you do. We just love you. Uh, everything about what you're doing. I want to say another real shout out to Ryan Hooper, our Associate Athletic Director, who has put all, everything together here, and also to our coaches. We had a really special brunch this morning, a very intimate brunch with the Hall of Fame inductees, and every one of them mentioned the impact that the coach had on them. And to see student athletes here and recognize that you don't know what you don't know yet, but your coach, the coaches in the audience are some of the most dedicated people I've ever worked with. So I really want to give a real shout out to all of our coaches. Could you please give them a warm welcome, coaches? Thanks for getting it done for us. So with that said, it's my great honor to introduce Jeff Hazard as our Master of Ceremonies. Thank you, Tracy. Just got a couple of, move some things around here so we can get a good view of our Hall of Famers. Like Tracy mentioned uh, and, and Dr. K mentioned, uh, this is certainly one of the most special days of the year uh, where we get to Welcome back, uh, past Hall of Famers, past legends, greats, uh, and welcome in more legends and more greats uh, to that wall out there, which is very special. Uh, we have a few marquee events every year, and this is certainly one that we all circle on our calendars uh, because it is such a great event, and we hope that you enjoy the day listening to the stories that these individuals have to share. I mean, this group includes Players of the Year, conference, uh, you know, all conference athletes, SUNYAC champions, uh, national champions. It, it's the best of the best, as Tracy has said. And certainly every year uh, when it comes time to picking from a list that is very extensive to try and include the best of the best, I mean, every year we just, we, I think we get it right. I really do. I think we just get it right. So certainly as we begin to meet some of these, now you can see that some of them might have changed a little bit from their old days. Um, I tell you, the two baseball guys, those should be baseball cards. I mean, they look great, don't they? They're ready to go. I probably, they could probably still play. I know they could. Um, so we're going to start out. We're going to meet our first Hall of Famer, um, an all-conference player, played for us for a couple years, member of a SUNYAC championship team in 1971, uh, also a SUNY scholar athlete, and also a teammate of one of our inductees, and it's always a special time when we can have teammates that uh, go in together, certainly part of our outstanding baseball teams in the 1970s, uh, coached by Don Axtell, who I'm very excited, and I'm glad you're here today, Don. It's great to see you, great to see you. So I'd like to, uh, if you could help me welcome our first inductee today, uh, Mr. Jim Doc Spartano.
Congratulations. This is something new, Todd. <laughs> uh, certainly, congratulations. Uh, you know, in addition to the accolades as a student athlete, you certainly have had an accomplished career as a administrator uh, for over 25 years at Utica College and certainly as a coach. How do you think that your time at Oneonta shaped what you have done in your career? Well, uh, I spent 38 years at Utica College. Uh, the last 15, 18 with the leadership of our president, Todd Hutton, him being here tells you a lot with his uh, support of, of faculty, staff, students, if there was a student receiving an award, he'd be there for them too. So that's uh, how we are. Um, I, I, don't, I was telling my daughter, and they said, don't, don't say that. I have no idea where I would be without uh, Oneana. Uh, uh, the, the people at the college, that was a good question you asked. This is 40 some odd years ago, but the people here, from admissions, Dick Burr and, and, and Vince, and, and I hate to mention names, and, and the, the registrar, the financial aid, uh, um, interacting with those people administratively to get through. Your students know what I'm talking about sometimes. That's challenging. Uh, and then go in the athletic office, and all the coaches, they just thought I was just like family. I saw Jan out there, and, and we hugged and kissed, and I had dinner with Fuelling last night, and Gart Stam, and, and to see Don Extel today, uh, they were friendly, they were warm, they were sincere, it was family. So get back to your question, I don't want to go, but I wanted, I know what that was like for me, and I wanted that to be for Utica College, those students, whether they're an athlete or not. I wanted that same energy, and I hope I did it. Well, I certainly know that you have from the way that people talk about you and the respect that they had for your career. Is there any moments, uh, you know, we, you, during brunch you shared a couple of stories about baseball, and if you could maybe share those with us as well. Well, John's here, Wilhelm, one of my, he, he kind of took me under his wing. Here I was, I was a non-traditional student. I was 29, 30 years old. This is kind of like my last stop. You know, I better do well. And John and Ray Ellis and, and uh, Jeff Bray and Mike Barron, they kind of took me, they, they accepted me. They nicknamed me Doc early on. And uh, it, was, uh, it was a wonderful experience with the athletes and, and the coaches. But uh, Mike Barron was a kind of a clown. He was our shortstop. And he was probably as good a shortstop I've ever seen. If we had him at Utica College, we would be in the NCAA, <laughs> along, with, along with John and along with our catcher there, Lou. They were, they were blue chip players. Anyways, we're downtown, and uh, he takes my glasses, and he puts it underneath the pool table. They, you put a quarter in and the ball, and, uh, and I don't have any glasses. And I had uh, uh, LASIK, so I could see, but I need the glasses. And uh, he said, oh, don't worry, Doc, we'll get the manager, we'll open it up. And we had practice Saturday, that was Friday. The manager's not there. So I can't, I don't have glasses. I can't see. So we got practice Saturday morning. So I go up to Coach Extel, I don't know if he remembers this, but I says, I broke my glasses, I'm gonna go home and pick one up. I live about an hour and a half away. I says, uh, he said, go out and try to do, do the best you can. Well, I'm at second base and he's throwing batting in the line drive, I'm at second base and the line drive is in left field and funny man John goes, Doc, what, no, you know. So every ball that's hit, I'm ducking. I'm telling you, it's scary not to see a baseball come at you. None of them were even close to me. <laughs> so I hustle in and with Coach Extel, Lou, John, you have to hustle in. You never walk on the field, which is a great character that, that we should have. I embrace that. And uh, I walk in and I, and I go over to Coach, and he's like a poker player, you know. Coach Extel's got this face. You don't know if he's happy, 
sad, you know, you know what? I said, coach, and he looks at me and he says, it's okay, Jim, I understand. Go get your glasses. <laughs> so, <laughs> so a, a second quick story would be, I was a leadoff hitter, and I tried to get on base and, you know, all that stuff. And John and Lou will attest to this. You know, I'd hit the ball down, and I'd try to beat it out. You know, and I'd, I'd get a base hit. But this guy, Ray Ellis, I'm on first base. Coaches, Extella's on coaching third. Ray Ellis would put his leg out, his hand here, and his hand up there like an E for air. So I'm on first base thinking it's a hit, and Ray's going like this, air, making an E. And I'm on first base, and I'm, I'm shaking my head whether that was a hit or an error. And all the guys be laughing in the dugout. I don't know if you remember that, John, but, but uh, I'd always try to doctor the, the book to, to make me look better, and, <laughs> and Extel wouldn't go for that. Uh, so those are two quick stories. I wow. Certainly a lot of fun. The teams we had back then, some of the players, I mean, certainly some of them, uh, Roger Weaver pitched in the major leagues, and I think we almost have just about the whole starting infield now in the Hall of Fame, now that we're adding you and, and Lou to the mix. Uh, some of those players, I mean, are there some other special special guys that you'd... Well, Danny Albin uh, uh, was, was really a, a great, great pitcher for us. And we were playing Cortland, and uh, we were up two to one, the guys on third base. And Mark Vivian, uh, Danny Albin's pitching bottom of the eighth, and the ball goes out in left field. He tags and scores. It's a tie game. So we're on the third base coaching in the, in the uh, box. Um, in the dugout, and Mark Vivian, I think it was a freshman or sophomore, jumps out as soon as the ball was hit, and he hollers to the runner just before the kid catches it, go! <laughs> so the kid took two steps, and then realized that wasn't the coach's voice, so he had to come back, re-tag, and it was too late. And, and Donnie Albin struck out the next guy, and we won the game two to one. <laughs> so, so, uh, we certainly thank Mark Vivian for his, uh, his spontaneity. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't know how long I'm going to be here, but I want to <laughs> I want to acknowledge Coach Extell. Yeah. I'm sorry. That's okay. He's the best. Yeah. He is. Yes, he is. We know that. Yes, he is. Our next Hall of Fame uh, inductee uh, played the hot corner for us on the softball team. Uh, part of two NCAA teams. Uh, I mean, they could hit, they could run, they could pitch. I mean, they were a machine. They were, they were pretty special. Uh, the one thing that stands out about uh, that 2001 team uh, was I had the pleasure of uh, traveling with them to Florida that year. And um, I mean, I don't know, I had a room with flu and Speranzi, so I don't know if that's a treat, but, uh, but certainly uh, heard all the stories, and, and, but we went five and five on that trip. And you would have thought that the season was over and we're, we're done and everybody's, you know, throwing it in. Um, but apparently there was, uh, you know, there had to have been a team meeting, and I'm sure that this young lady right here was, was in the middle of that meeting saying that we need to buckle down and we need to start playing. Uh, and what was it, 26 in a row we won after that? Um, so I think the meeting uh, worked, and uh, certainly a great player, uh, all-conference player, all-region, uh, played on two NCAA tournament teams, actually our first SUNYAC, our first and second SUNYAC championship softball teams, uh, still our career leader in RBIs 14 years later, uh, just a tremendous, tremendous player, played the game hard, and just wanted to win. Uh, so please help me welcome our next Hall of Famer, Elena Isby Larangio.
I know, we're not, oh, there we go. There we go. Uh, congratulations and welcome back. Uh, happy Thank anniversary. You. Thank you. Today's our wedding anniversary, everyone. <laughs> she has uh, her three beautiful children are here. Where are they? Wave, right? Her husband. Thank you all for coming. Uh, we're going to hear a little bit about her career and, and let her say what she'd like to say about her time here at Oneonta. So can you please, you know, the impact that Oneonta had for you. Just coming here was a great experience. I didn't plan on coming here. I didn't know what I was doing as a senior. Flu recruited me to come here as a senior in high school. And I came here the following week and with my mom and wound up signing papers to stay. Now, uh, the story that you told us in brunch is that he really wasn't there looking. He was looking at another player yeah. on your team. No, the opposite team. Oh, the opposite team. team. Yep, he was looking at uh, the pitcher for the Shaker high school team and was sitting in front of my mom and wound up talking to her about me and thought that I was already going somewhere and she informed him that I wasn't. And he got me after the game and we were here. <laughs> and, and we're certainly glad you did come. Uh, can you talk about some of the teammates that you played with and some of the teams that you played on? I mean, that was a, a pretty great run for us. We're still in that, but just some of those teams and some of the players. I, we were a bunch of freshmen when we came in. We had our entire field, we were talking about it earlier, except for two players were freshmen. And we grew together playing the same positions all the way, all four years. We had a big team a very young team that got to play together all four years and we became very close and we still talk today. Yeah. Now the um, the first time you won the SUNYAC uh, championship, uh, you were a sophomore. Yes. Yeah. What was that experience? It, like? it was surreal. I mean, we worked really hard to get where we were and just to see all of us come together and be able to achieve that goal to be going to the NCAA tournament, it was just amazing. Now, and knowing that we were the first team to do it right. for this college for softball. Yeah. And then two years later as seniors, I mean, was it the feeling that you had within that team that you, you thought that you were the best team and you could really go far? We never thought we were the best team. We just knew we had it. We had something. Yeah. We had something in the, the camaraderie that our team had. We knew we could pull together and achieve anything we wanted. Yeah, uh, we have, again, we have quite a few players on that team that are in the Hall of Fame mm -hmm. as well. I just, you know, getting to watch them play, uh, I don't know how anybody got a hit. <laughs> I mean, we had pitching, we had defense, we had Liz McGrail, who's our women's soccer coach out there in center field who could track down a ball anywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, and the two corner outfielders weren't shabby either because nope. they could catch everything else. Yep. Uh, so I, I don't know how we lost that many games. I know, that we, we didn't really lose too many. No, we didn't, which, again, the best, our best record uh, ever in, in school history. So is there anybody that you'd like to thank? My parents, they came to every game. They didn't miss anything. I couldn't be where I am without them today. <laughs> and I'll never forget my senior year, we were at RPI and a couple of ambulances pulled up. I was working for Empire Ambulance um, when I was in school. And the guy that I call my husband and we're celebrating our anniversary was in that field watching me play and we were only friends at the time and just to know that he's sitting here and he's the father of my children just <laughs> thank you guys <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah. and lastly i definitely want to thank flu i don't know where he is <laughs> thank you for everything you've done for me you were a great coach. I learned a lot from you. Thank you for coming and making an, a trip to East Greenbush, New York to watch as somebody that wasn't there and saw something in me to bring me here. Thank you. Do you have any, um, do you have any advice for our student athletes as, as now that you've been out there in the real world and any advice for them as they? I guess the only advice that I really have is while you're here, remember everything. Write things down so you'll remember it in the future. Work your hardest, do your best, become the best person that you can. 
because someday you will have children and you want them to be the best person, people that they can be also. Well, thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thanks. Outstanding. Our next gentleman, teammate of Jim Spartano, a four-year starting catcher for us, all-conference player, two SUNYAC championship teams, an ECAC championship team, uh, just an incredible, incredible player, as mentioned by Doc Spartano, and we're going to hear a little bit more. Uh, but please help me welcome Lou Condon. Yeah, yeah, we try to get the best chairs for this. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. And uh, certainly welcome back to uh, Oneonta. I know it's been, uh, you know, been a few years or whatever, but we know that you're still involved in uh, coaching uh, baseball. Why don't you talk a little bit about that first? Well, I, re I, um, I left Oneonta in 1974. I went on to become a teacher in Corning. I taught there for 33 years, coached baseball and football for 33 years, then decided to retire in 2007. That lasted about three years, and I got a call to be the, if I wanted to be interested in taking over as an assistant baseball coach at Corning Community College. I said, ah, that'd be a nice job for me to do in the fall, so give me something to do. So I went up there and went through the fall practices and started the recruiting process with our head coach at that time, and he called me up the first week of December and says, I'm quitting. I go, great. That's what I want to hear right now. He goes, yeah, I've got other job restrictions. I can't do it, so forth and so on. I said, well, you need to tell the AD, make sure everything's all squared away, you know what's going on, so you don't leave anybody high and dry. Five o'clock that afternoon, he called me again. He says, it's done and over. She needs to talk to you. Call her. I said, I'm not going to call her at, at night on a cell phone. I'll call her in the morning. So this nine o'clock the next morning, I called her AD at Corning Community College, and I said to her, Stacy, uh, it's Lou Cannon. He goes, how fast can you get up here? I said, well, give me 10 minutes to get a shower. I'll be up there in 10 minutes. So I got in the shower, ran up this college. At 10.30, I got there about 25 after 9. At 9.35, I was named head coach. <laughs> At that time, I had nine players in our program. And it was, hold my breath, learned how to text, guys. I can text. <laughs> I learned how instantly. I think in the first two days, I had 195 text messages out. And I didn't know how to spell text message at that time. So to make a long story short, I've been at the job now since 2011, uh, enjoying every minute of it. I would like to say I am definitely a product of Coach Extel. And I have to tip my hat to him. Coach, you set the tone for me as a coach. I try to do everything that you did from practices to game demeanor to how I treat my players. And if it wasn't for you and what you taught me in the four years that I was here, I wouldn't be where I am today, and I thank you very much. That actually, uh, that actually is going to be the next question of how your influence from his uh, teachings has influenced your professional life. Well, when I came to Oneon in, two, in 1970, in the fall of 1970, I came out of Corning, New York, and Corning, if you don't know, is a hotbed for lacrosse. Uh, in the four years that I was in high school, I had five different coaches. And when I came to Oneana, or actually, that the summer of, before my senior year, I was actually playing in a tournament, New York State Base, Babe Ruth tournament in Cooperstown. And just by sheer luck, Coach Flewelling and Coach Axtell were both there watching the game. And after the game, both coaches came up and said, we'd love you to come be interested in Oneana. We'd love to have you come here, come take a visit. And from that point on, I told Coach Flowing before, I think I got a call every day for the whole year. Best move I ever made. Absolutely, I would not change a minute of it. I'd come back. If they said you could go back and be 17 years old again and start again, I would do it again. Coach set the tone right off the bat. 
He was fair. He was honest. He was the kind of person who you really wanted to be around. Uh, you couldn't tell if he was a high, like Doc said, you, if he was up on top or down below, the same demeanor every single time. But you knew perfectly well that when you left the gym door across the Chase Gymnasium and you ran up the hill, and Hoyt will remember this, and Ricky will remember this also, you ran up to the barn, you got to the barn, white barn door, and you turned around and you ran up to the baseball field, and you had to do it within a certain amount of time. And it became a normal routine. Everybody did it. Did we moan and groan? Absolutely. But we did it. And we loved every minute of it, and I would do it again in a heartbeat. And we got on the field, and coach was always there waiting for us. And you knew when you got on the field for that two hours or two and a half hours we were practicing, he was going to be the director. He, he orchestrated the whole deal. And I tip my hat to him because he did a phenomenal job. Um, what, um, any special stories for you in addition to some of the things that uh, Jim? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I've got a couple. When I first arrived on campus in the fall of 1970, here I was locked in my room. We got here a couple of days early for orientation. And I sat in my room and I was waiting there and I said, well, what am I going to do? And my roommate was a baseball player. So we're sitting there as two really naive upstate New York freshmen. And about 9 o'clock at night, I get a knock on the door. And it was a group of our seniors. And I think Ray was there and Hoyt. Doc wasn't there yet, but he was on his way. And they said, we're going downtown. And I go, no. Yes. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. You've got to learn what, where to go and where not to go. So those guys took us down downtown. We came back up on campus. And the rest is history. Uh, I remember specifically another story. We were playing Oswego, and I don't know if Coach had ever been thrown out of a game for anything, but for some reason, I did something batting or took a call. A guy bounced. I think he bounced a strike in, and he called it a strike. Called strike third strike. I was livid. Co I think but co I looked over and Coach is running onto the field. And the umpire put his hand up and told him to slow down. Coach says, that was terrible, the worst call he ever seen. And that's all he said. And the guy says, you're gone. And I looked around. I didn't know what to say. I looked at Doc. I looked at Hoyt. And we're looking around. And nobody knew what to do. And finally, we all said, Doc, you're the oldest. You're in charge. <laughs> so Doc actually took over. And I remember we were playing it. We actually won the game. As I looked over into the parking lot, I could see Coach going back and forth, back and forth. He never stopped. For, for a doubleheader, because at that time, you, you were out for both games, and we actually won both the games. But uh, it's one of those experiences that you never forget, and it sticks in your mind. Yeah. Now, what about your educational experience? Uh, as, as a preparation, you were a student, you, know, you were a teacher for 33 years. I mean, well, I actually, I came to Oneana not wanting to be a teacher. I actually came here, and my goal, my entire, from a little child right straight through, I always wanted to be a dentist, and that was my goal. And when I first came on for my visitation here, I was being escorted around. I was going into the gym. And God rest his soul, Jay Powa came walking out of the gymnasium. And Jay was a, a history teacher, history professor here, and avid weightlifter, avid, lived and died in the gym. Just that's where he, if you couldn't find him in his office, he was in the gym. And coach introduced me to him. And he says, this is Dr. Powa. And he's a history teacher. And he says, glad to meet you. And he says, uh, what's your goal? And I said, I really want to be a, a dentist. He said, what's your dad do? And I said, well, my dad was an electrician in the glassworks. He goes, does he make a lot of this? And I said, not really. I said, I have four sisters, and there's a, we have a couple of big family. He said, you better find a new profession. He said, what about teaching? I said, well. And I, I sat in his class as a freshman and absolutely fell in love with it. And the rest is history. 33 years later in education, uh, look back on it and probably the smartest move ever made. Educationally, it was awesome here. I, I enjoyed every class I took. I enjoyed being in class. I enjoyed doing all the things that I had to do, uh, the practice. Everything was just phenomenal. It was a wonderful experience for me. Mm. And would there be anything that you'd like to pass on to our current students that are here? First and foremost, always trust yourself. Put yourself in a situation where you, you know the difference between right and wrong. You know the difference between what is expected of you and what's not expected of you. 
never, ever, ever in your schoolwork, in your athletics, doubt yourself. Trust yourself and live by that and sky's the limit. Awesome. Is there anybody else you'd like to uh, thank before you? I would love to thank my family. Yeah. They're, my mom, my sisters are here, my wife, and my, my sons, and my daughter-in-law. I wish my dad was here. He was my supporter. Uh, to my sisters, I want to thank you for all the years of shagging baseballs. <laughs> I got to hit, they got to shag. I got to hit, they got to shag. But like all of our, my fellow inductees have said, they were there for every game. I know my dad used to come, go to work in early, come out, and he'd, I'd, he'd be there. I wouldn't expect him, he was there. And I think that was something that I will always remember, and I really appreciate that. Thank you very much. Yeah. Well, thank you again. Congratulations. <laughs>
And thank goodness, as usual, they didn't listen to me, and they knew better. Um, because, you know, this is where I found my home. And at first I was, you know, dead set on going somewhere south. I wanted warm weather and sunshine. And, um, but it did come down to, you know, my dad, he was a New York City fireman. And if I went away south, he was going to continue working. And if I was able to stay here, he was able to retire. And, you know, hands down the best decision I ever made, I think, for all of us. And, uh, you know, my parents were able to come and be at every game, whether it was home, away. It didn't matter. They're always there. So mm -hmm. now, uh, you're a school teacher yourself now. Yes. Um, how of how did Oneana prepare you uh, prepare you for what you're doing now? Now teach I teach special ed uh, at the elementary level, but I also was able to teach high school when I first came out, and I think that was an experience because I was not that much older than everyone, and I got involved coaching the soccer team there, um, which I was lucky enough to have my cousin on the team, <laughs> so that was fun. Um, but to be so similar in age, to the, I had to be able to separate myself from them as well, too. And just having that confidence and um, the leadership qualities that Dave and Tracy were able to teach us and instill in us, I was able to really you know, lean back on that and just find out who I was when I was just coming out of school. And I think because of coming to here and having them as my coaches and the numerous people here, you know, Dr. Perry and Dr. Ingersoll and, you know, all these people who reached out and were a part of my life, they just shaped who I became and I'm forever grateful for that. Uh, the 2003 season is certainly a very special year for everyone that was yeah. on that team. Yeah, I, it would be tough to encapsulate the whole <laughs> season, uh, but if you could maybe just point to a couple of highlights. Maybe when did you think, I mean, was there a sense in the team that you thought you could really do this? There, there was. We had... You know, we say it's tough to believe almost, but like our preseason was fantastic and I didn't usually do preseason. So uh, I actually went through that one and we all felt, you know, we, everyone came in ready to go. So it wasn't, we were already prepared in that sense. Um, I was telling Tracy before we had a practice, you know, one V ones and everyone literally had, was so feisty because everyone wanted to win. And you know, you'd knock somebody down, you'd pick them up, they'd say thank you and you'd go again. Um, the experiences then, we had a, a Wednesday morning practice where Tom Benoit, our trainer, he would come and torture us for the <laughs> hour or so that we were here. And we loved every second, maybe after it was over, but um, just the dedication and that never give up, um, it just was amazing throughout our whole team all the time. Mm -hmm. And as we kept going, I mean, we had amazing victories. And even when we thought, it's question, you know, can we get this game? There was never, uh, no one ever stopped playing hard. Yeah. Everything was left on the field. And, and that was evident for those who, you know, never didn't get to witness that game because there were about, a, you know, more than a thousand people screaming and yelling uh, on Thanksgiving weekend. Okay, this is when the NCAA had the national championship, like right after Thanksgiving, we're playing soccer out on this field and, and it was just, it was electric. And the way we won the game, you know, we, we were down. It's the last minute. You know, Rose Vallon puts that ball down, kicks it towards the goal. It's in the back, and now it's tied. And then certainly Sonata kicking that ball that just looked like it was going wide and into the goal was certainly a special time and, and certainly to enjoy. I mean, you keep in touch with them, and, and what's that like, that camaraderie? It's great. You know, a lot of us live, uh, you know, some distance away and stuff like that, but the moment you're back together, it's like you never left. Um, so I know even, you know, our goalie Laura is here today. Um, Sonata and Brooke are both making, you know, a trip here too. And everyone who wasn't able to come, I've got, you know, text messages and phone calls of everyone just, you know, reaching out and saying, that, you know, they wish they could be here. And just the memories that came flooding back to everyone. It's, it's been an emotional <laughs> couple yeah. of weeks just yeah. with everyone remembering all the memories here. Yeah. Uh, is there anybody that you'd like to, uh, to thank for your time during... Well, of course, my parents, who, like I said, they made their way here all the time, or weather and distance, none of that ever mattered. So they were always here. And, you know, my husband, obviously, and my son, I wish that they, uh, I would have known them then so you could have seen us, you know, in, in action when we were going. But just to be here and Dr. Ingersoll, I'll never forget our breakfast in the morning when he used mm -hmm. to come and make us at Dave and Tracy's. And, you know, Dr. Perry, I know he couldn't be here, but he holds a very special place in my heart. And um, Jeff and Lori Churchill, they kind of adopted me when we met my freshman year, and they made the trip as well. 
and they followed uh, they followed my soccer career. So, and it's just amazing. Well, congratulations once again, and welcome to our Hall of Fame. Thank you so much. Well, certainly, uh, we're down to our last gentleman, who uh, certainly I know will have plenty of stories for us. Uh, Mr. Bassett uh, still is coaching. Uh, he's at the University of Albany, still giving back to a sport that he just loves. And uh, that's what it's about. It's, it's giving back, and he's doing it every day uh, still today. Uh, he was a three-sport athlete here for us, uh, came in from Coble skill after a semester, but we're glad he came this way. Um, and he uh, just he played uh, three years of soccer, two-year captain, uh, gave up his last year of basketball to coach our JV basketball team and started his coaching career, and he's been coaching ever since. Uh, so please help me welcome Don Bassett. We're back on. We're back on the air. Commercial's over. So you've been coaching basketball for, well, I guess it's what, 60, 60 years 58 maybe? Years. 58 years. What, where's the passion? Where does that come from? I mean. I can go way back because uh, between my freshman and sophomore year and in high school, uh, I got polio. So I didn't play in my sophomore year. I did get well. But I got together a bunch of little kids. They called them biddies. And uh, I formed a team with them. And they didn't lose any games, so I got to like it. <laughs> and uh, I think I got the bug then. And uh, then, of course, when I came to Oneana, uh, I was a sports bug or a nut. And, uh, I enjoyed playing. I actually got recruited to play basketball and ended up, I would say, my best sport here was soccer. So I got recruited while I was here because Coach McClain came to me and I knew the year before they didn't win a game. It was the first year of soccer here in Oneana. And he said, I, I see where you played football. He said, why don't you play soccer? And I said, well, I can't do all that foot stuff. And I, he said, well, come on down and practice and we'll see. So I said to him, I could play goalie. And actually the guy I replaced, we were talking about this the other day. He doesn't even walk in the door today, Joe Spanfelner. He was the captain of the team and Coach McClain said, you can't play goalie. Our captain is the goalie. Well, I ended up being the goalie after the first game and played goalie for three years and uh, we, we did pretty well we I mentioned that brunch we uh, got the first NCAA victory and uh, we won some games now the experiences that you had here and now certainly uh, coaching young athletes today uh, what are I mean do you use the same principles that were that you feel were important when you were playing um, actually, I, I've coached so many different levels that actually my first job after I left here was at junior high and uh, my high school coach came to me after two seasons and asked me if I wanted to go up and coach with them. And I actually, my first job in high school, I coached football, cross country, basketball, and I started track. They had never had track. And I still remember, I got $1,000 for doing all that. <laughs> and uh, I was supposed to be the next football coach and ended up being the next basketball coach. And I did that in high school with that level. 
and I've always believed my philosophy wasn't, well, I'll say that my father, who was my number one fan, told me I shouldn't coach because you're a poor loser. So I promised him I wasn't going to lose. There you go. <laughs> uh, so anyway, uh, at, that, at that level, my goal was always not how many games we can win, but I wanted to see how many guys would get to further their education through sports. And I'm really proud of the number of guys that I see now that have done so well. Um, some of the stories from your time here, I mean, I know you've, you've shared a, a million already with us. Um, maybe there's a couple that you can reshare with this group See, I, th I think you saved the oldest for last because <laughs> This place was so different when I was here. Um, we used to have to go down. I don't know if it's still, is the armory yeah, still the armory here? still here. We used to play our games in the armory. I had guys on the team that didn't remember how to get their days for practice. It was so bad. And it was an old dingy building. I remember that. And uh, one of my teammates, Kramer Harrington, who I see out there, I know. He shot better there because it was dark and the lights were out. <laughs> yeah. And I passed him the ball all the time. I was the point guard. Um, I would say that plus the fact of uh, our games being down, and I, I figured it out today. The thinking you have to do is unbelievable. It was Neewa Park. Neewa Park. Okay. And my best memory was when we beat Lemoyne in our first victory because it was like winning the world championship. <laughs> and then the next one, which is unbelievable, and I verified it with Donnie Jester when he was here because I played with him. And I did play baseball. My distinction is when you hit a grand slam home run, four runs score, I went into a game with the bases loaded, and I sent 300 people home and I think if I were to go down there I could still find the ball going that the guy hit because it went in orbit <laughs> but uh, the game the, the experience that I remember best is in my junior year uh, when I didn't pitch I played the outfield as a matter of fact and uh, we went undefeated and in one of those games as you mentioned I came from Cobble Skill we played Kobelskill, and Kobelskill had a pitcher who was actually drafted by the major leagues, and they were shutting us out nine to nothing, and I didn't feel too good getting beat by him. And in the last inning, his name was Jerry Heiser. In the last inning, he walked the bases loaded, and thank God the coach of Kobelskill took him out and put a new pitcher in. And we scored 10 runs with two outs, and we won 10-9. <laughs> See, Yogi Berra was right. It's never over till it's over. <laughs> um, anyone uh, you'd like to uh, thank for your, during your time here? Yeah, there's, there's three people first. Um, that aren't here physically, but I know they're here, would be my mother and father, and my wife who passed away six years ago, last Sunday, and uh, everybody says basketball is your life, and actually, I got married while I was going to Oneana in my senior year. My son Mike was born in Oneana. So I know my mother and father and my wife are watching and I dedicate this to them. And basketball is important to me, but the greatest gift that I have is my family. By the way, at my age, 
you can't believe the people who ask me how old I am, and I tell them, when I came to school here, this school was called Oneana Normal. And it was normal to graduate when you were like 13, so <laughs> I'm not as old as, as you think, and if you look at that picture, you can tell I wasn't that old when I was there. <laughs> so people say to me now, wow, you look good at your age. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anybody else? Um, of the coaches I had here, um, and I understand he passed away, but Shorty, I think his last name was Laterra, we just call him Shorty, was the JV coach, and I'm sure Kramer can remember, we had a great JV team. And uh, Shorty was always, you're the coach on the floor, you're the point guard, you gotta run the show. And I've always done that with my point guards, I've let them run the show. And when I became a senior, I still wonder about this because I think I would have been the starting point guard Shorty came to me and said, do you want to coach when you graduate, right? And I said, yes. And he said, well, you're not going to play in the NBA if you play on the varsity this year. He said, I'm going to resign. And I'm thinking you should coach the team. And I thought about it, and I thought about it, and I said, no, he's right. I'm not going to make the NBA. <laughs> So I became the JV basketball coach, and it was a tremendous experience because the teams that Hal Chase couldn't get on his varsity schedule, we played them, and a lot of them were really good. And we played some Air Force bases with guys that had already been great college players, so that was good. I still remember that was one of the teams I coached that didn't have a winning record. We were 14 and 15. And I still see some of those people that I, I coached. And uh, I think Shorty gave me the opportunity to really a springboard into, into coaching. And I think Hurley, by recruiting me for soccer, helped me when I had to recruit a track team. Because I did it the same way. I went around, I examined all those physical fitness tests to see who did the long jump to furthest and all these things, and I recruited all those guys. So th they were a big influence. And then the fact of, uh, I think his name was Jerry Wright, was the baseball coach. And he, uh, I think that game when we came from behind and, and won 10-9 certainly proved that it's not over till it's over. And I've always taught that in basketball, the game's not over till the final horn. One of my point guards proved that when it was six, I think there was six seconds left in a game and we were down by six and he fouled. And the newspaper asked him, why would you foul then? And he said, coach said the game's never over till the horn goes off and the horn hadn't gone off. So the lesson there is enjoy every day of your life because it won't be over till it's over. Thank you. told you it was going to be awesome. Uh, we just, once again, can we have a round of applause for this 2015 Hall of Fame class? At this time, we'd like you to remain at your seats while we recess our uh, Hall of Famers out to the wall where we'll unveil their plaques. Uh, it's going to be, we're not done yet. We've got a few more minutes, so if you could please just remain where you are, and when they're uh, recessed, we'll let everyone else join them out in the atrium out at the Hall of Fame wall. So if we could have our escorts. <laughs> 